Fred, you tell us some stories about WISC and WWNC in Asheville, North Carolina, and when y'all were just starting out. Mars Hill, North Carolina. Am I on? Yeah. Okay. Back years ago, I had an old cheap guitar, and I, I, I didn't know how to play it. A couple old boys up the road down there, they, they, they tried to play, but, uh, you know, the, back then, people not, didn't know who was good and who wasn't. The only thing they know to do is just listen to what was there. <laughs> and <laughs> we used to be sitting there in the winter time, and my dad would be sitting there looking over his glasses. <laughs> reading the newspaper behind this old cheap guitar and I'd sit over in the corner and they'd just go pling 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 over and over and over and finally my dad would look over his glasses and he'd say son 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 <laughs> put that old guitar away it, you won't amount to nothing you see a man a coming down the road with an old guitar or an old banjo, he's going to steal something or he's a hunting a place to stay all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I remember one time we was up at, me and Calvin Smart went up to Walt Moss's. <laughs> old Walt, he picked the banjo a little bit. And I don't think old Walt was, <laughs> he's about two bricks short. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> me and Calvin used to go up there and old Walt to pick the banjo. We lived on Big Branch. And uh, we'd go up there every night and old Walt would pick the banjo and he'd get excited. That's when they put them di dimes under the bridges. I don't know why they done that. And old Walt would get to playing that banjo. I've never loved that. <laughs> That bridge flew out. <laughs> Them dives went there for him. He didn't even know this guy. <laughs> just he just, he just kept a going. He just kept a going. We was, me and Calvin's up there one night, and we was in there trying to pick, and somebody hollered out there in, in the yard, and uh, we lived right there before the, that highway went through there. They was just working through there. Walt went out on the porch and there's two boys up there next to the road. I hollered, one just to come up there's house. <laughs> Said their car's in a ditch down there and they needed somebody to help them. Walt, he talked funny, you know, and he, hey, hey, boy, hey, boy, uh, hey, let's go down here and help these two gentlemen get their car out of the ditch. <laughs> Said, well, so we started down there, and these, these two guys, they kept a, just walked along in front of us. Oh, they always stayed in front of us, and we just kept a follow them, follow them and, and said, well, where is, it's all down here. Uh, we walked, I bet you, it's two miles. <laughs> About that time a car come down the road, and you know who it was? It's my brother. And, and, and Boyd McKinney, they didn't even have a car. <laughs> <laughs> they hollered us out. We walked for two miles following them, thinking we'd come. And you talk about a high man kicking. <laughs> they was some went on. <laughs> oh, which brother was it? That was James. James. Uh, my, sob. That old Sob. Old Sob. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Oh. Tell you another little story. When we was on the, this one was on WIC, uh, we was trying to, trying to get started, you know, on one thing or another. We, we never, never got it. Barely did get a show well down there. When we did get one, was tickled to death, you know. And so, one day we got the show that come in from theater somewhere or another. And so, 
We sacked up, we were heading for it, and our luck had been awful. It was in the afternoon, we was going west, and somebody said, just look at that beautiful sunset. <laughs> somebody said, sun's out of hell, that's that theater running down the way it fixes the go play. <laughs> That was about the luck of the draw. You know something we need to uh, to talk about that we haven't on tape is uh, your mother and dad and Red's mother and dad used to sing together. I know it, and they used to fox hunt together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you a little story on that. They sung down there at Dry Branch. Little church down there. And Is that the one you have a picture of? No, that's Little Ivy. Oh, now okay. This, this a dry one, branch. Yeah, okay. okay. I'll tell you a story on that and two of us. Well, <laughs> dry branch and Claude and all of them, they sung down there, you know, and uh, they used to talk sun all together. Claude and Dad did. And I was thinking the other day that. Uh, Somebody asked Claude or Dad one says, Why do you boys foxes said we like to hear the dogs bark? I just thought like well, today I said if they like to hear dogs bark, they just want to build the house up here barks all night, they come down and list to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh well, I knew they used to sing together, though, and I couldn't uh, figure out if, did Nora sing too, and your yeah, mother? Yeah, the, the whole works. <laughs> Can you remember hearing them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what it sounded like. I didn't know the good from the bad. Well, had uh, a quartet. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Spurgeon Henderson, he owned the benches in the church, and I think he owned the ch church or something. They all got into fuss down there one night and Spurgeon went down there and carried his benches out. <laughs> Repossessed the benches. Now Spurgeon... He was he was Nora's cousin. Red's, did Red. Nora's parents raise him or something? Spurgeon? Raise who? Spurgeon. Who, who was his, it? His name was... Uh, He's a Henderson. Well, Spurgeon. Nora was a Henderson. Yeah. Um, who was it that uh, Nora's mother and daddy raised? Somebody. No, that that that, that was Earl. They didn't have but two, and that's Earl and Red. I know that, but they they raised somebody. Well, no, Nora's mother and daddy, Lynn Henderson and his wife, raised somebody. I thought I it was remember. Spurgeon. I don't remember that though. Of course, what they done, now I remember this well, Claude and Dad made them a batch of homebrew up the house, and I remember they, they made it in a tub in the kitchen on sink to get hot water, you know, and I remember they poured, I remember Claude pouring them bottle or a can of that hops in there, uh, you know, and I asked him why, he said, son, that's molasses. <laughs> I said, son, that's molasses. Well, I didn't know the difference. I know what it was. Well, after it worked a few days, I reckon it got to be beer or something, and they had a big revival meeting down there at Dry Branch, and they had a singing that night and Spurgeon and Dad and Claude got him a bucket that homebrew and hid it in the creek up there where it stay cool where they could go up there and get them some homebrew at intermission and Claude and Dad and was, was a singing doing the singing and, and uh, well it's up there having a shot you know and some women come up the road, and the road was almost by the creek, and these women saw them down there, and they, she, they knew what they were drinking, and they went back and, and squealed on them. Went back and squealed on them, see, drinking that homebrew. 
Well, back then, they could come get you if, if they thought you were drinking at home. They, they'd come get you back then. So, uh, one evening, about dusk, there's an old sheriff by the name of Melvin Norton. I remember it. Wore an old overall coat, you know, and then shaved, what up a wire faced and you know what I'm talking about. Well, Dad seen him coming up the road. He said, Now yonder comes some L Norton. Don't you boy, don't you kids say nothing about no homebro. Now don't you do it. Now, he knew that we had heard about it. And uh he walked up, I remember he walked up to the steps. He said, Old Ballard, do you know anything about any homebrew around here or anywhere? I remember he said, No. Dad said, No. Don't know a thing. Well, old little old Fred, he hopped up and says, Yes, sir, Spurgeon hid some in the creek down there above the church. That took care of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got Dad over there behind the barn. Dad finally had to go to jail over it, but Dad come in the house and I was in the bed. I remember he walked in, he said, Son, 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 he says, You sure fixed me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, it was your daddy as funny as Claude. Claude was a character. And I, I well, just figure that your dad was just as funny. Well, dad, dad was funny, but he, he, he was more serious. Claude, Claude was funny, but he didn't have to be funny. He was a W. C. Field. He, That's true. He reminded true. me they had they had a pace for brothers. I know. Uh, men, 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 Earl and Red. We used to go over to Gross Banks and buy us a pint of whiskey every now and then, see. Well, we'd bring it in, and the club, now he'd drink, he'd drink your liquor up. So, if he found out you had any, he'd never buy none, but he'd drink yours. And we walked in his upstairs, and he heard us downstairs, he'd figured, well, we had some. He'd come down and what 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 are you boys drinking? What are you boys drinking? I see that I see that. Hey, don't don't you boys know better to buy buy, buy, buy this old old stuff right here? So if you gonna drink something, go go to the whiskey store and get something good. Get something. Why, wow, my lord, how do you drink this? Stuff? Good 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 good. <laughs> well, you'd go out you'd go out to the whiskey store. You'd buy a bottle of whiskey and come in and Claude found out you had it. Let me see that. Let me see that. You, you can tell. You remember just about how he sounded. Let me see that. You'd turn it down. Good, 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 good. Earl, don't you know better to buy? Go out to Lures. Go out to Lures and buy some of that corn. That's this stuff ain't fit to drink. <laughs> He's, he's a character. We'd, we'd play tricks on him all the time, though. One night he's upstairs, and then Earl and Red come in, was all three about half loaded. And we heard him come down the ironing board, was there, and we put Earl up to get up on the ironing board and lay down back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud come downstairs and me and Red just kind of sitting there with their head down. He, he said, Earl, 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 what's wrong with you? What's, if you go to sleep, go upstairs. This is nowhere to sleep. <laughs> oh. We pull tricks on him all the time. Oh, my children used to get him to climb the apple tree in the backyard and get them apples. 
with a ladder, and then when you get up in a tree, they'd take the ladder and run. <laughs> they, they did the same thing. Bill and Ronnie ter terrorized him with things like that. <laughs> the old man, is, he's good, though. He used to stay out the house a whole lot, him and Nord. When Red is a little boy, and Red's younger than me, see, we lived out Mars Hill. And Red is just a little old dead-headed boy. And he'd come out there, he'd try to follow me around. Beyond Sunday, they'd come out the house and eat dinner, and little Red, and he'd like to follow around after me. And I was old enough that on Sunday evening wanted to go to some of their houses up there and see the little girls and so forth and so on. And Red would try to follow me. I'd throw rocks at him, <laughs> trying, to, trying to run him back. <laughs> oh, you used to hide your guitar from him too, didn't you? I sure did. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want him to fool in my guitar. He's very expensive. I guess it costs three dollars. <laughs> Sears and Roebuck, huh? But that, I don't know where it comes from. It's a serenader. I'll never will forget it. <laughs> a serenader. Oh, Lord. Yeah, they come out the house. I'll tell you something that uh, we need to do a whole tape on is uh, yours and Red's association with Bascom Lamar Lunsford and Jim Lunsford and Blackwell Lunsford, mm -hmm. all of them, because that's very important piece mm -hmm. of the history of music. Mm -hmm. Is uh, y'all grew up listening to Samantha Baumgartner and all those women at the City Auditorium and With those things. Getting back to WIC, oh, old old uh, Jimmy Mackey, he played the dobro with us. That's Ben, Jim. And, um, and Mackie and uh, so forth. So we put Mackie kind of in charge. And like you say, we want to get no work. We want to get no work. So, but one day at the PTA from out there, one of them little places outside of town out there, come down there and want to talk to us about a show. Well, Mackie was out there talking to her. And while he's talking to her, Charlie Mackey come by with, you know what? And, and uh, Jim, he asked, he asked, back then you'd smoke anywhere, see? <laughs> so Jim come by, and Mackey's talking to this woman about PTA show. He asked, he asked Jim for a match. Jim reached in his pocket and handed him a box of rubber. <laughs> And he said, and unfolded you know, right there in front of that woman, and she walked out the door. And Mackie come in out to Jim and says, Here we get about here, we finally try to get a job, and here you come by and hand me a box of rubber. <laughs> Jim Lunsford was one of a kind. Hey, that's the truth. I've never laughed as much in my life as just to have him around. We went out to, me and Red, went, that was when he, they first moved out to, out there at Franklin at that farm, you know. And uh, Jim always said that, Jim always said that he had like to, have a place out in the country where he could pee off his front porch, see. <laughs> he had a whole parcel of young ones, you know. And he was, had a big old cement front porch. You, you drove through the gate and right up to the front door, you know, in the yard. And <coughs> me and Red said, let's go out and see old Jim. We drove out there and there the old set on the front porch. <laughs> Looked. And there Jim was, a peeing off the front porch. <laughs> <laughs> that figures. Did you ever read Dolly Parton's book? No, but I, 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 well, I, I, didn't, I, don't, a, I don't have to read it. No. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> well, there's, there's a story similar to that that she tells about her father was out taking a leak off the front porch and the mother got mad and she starts reprimanding him in front of all of these kids because he was drunk. So, so he climbs down onto the ground, pees up onto the porch. <laughs> <laughs> Never oh. heard of that. <laughs> oh, now, Fred, I got something real special to show you. I'm not gonna give it to you. 
You tell me who these ladies are. Well, I, I'll tell you what. Now, they look familiar. Well, this one's me. What is his name? <laughs> that's Sarah Crenshaw. Well, that, that's Sarah. That's Connie Jones. I remember all three of them. <laughs> but I... I I, I, I could have studied them out, but I couldn't study it either. I could have. I got old. I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> Was that before you married Red? Or? Well, I don't know. You know, I don't have a date on that, but that's Sarah and Connie. Weren't they characters? Oh, I'll tell you what. Ain't that the truth? How old are you when you've been married? Sarah, you walked to work down in... Uh, down at uh, the Ferno, down there, you know, 16, for a long time. I don't know whatever happened to them people. It worked where? In, in the Ferno. In, in the Ferno, down, down next to, uh, off of, on the back side of town down there. In Asheville? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know where they are now. And Myrtle, you remember Myrtle? Although I met Myrtle. <laughs> We we'll run around together all the time. Myrtle's daddy was the sheriff of Black Mountain. I didn't know that. Uh, you wouldn't have went anywhere near her house if you'd have known that, would oh, well, you? Well, I never did go around her house. I used to spend a weekend out there. I used to go home with her on weekends a lot. Oh, mercy. Well, we've told some tall tales today and had some fun. I hope we can come back and do this again. And what we need to do is line up pages of questions like mm -hmm. uh, I want to really do a whole tape on Bascom and Jim Lonsford mm -hmm. and them and yours and Red's association with them and then other little areas like when y'all first came to WNOX maybe do a whole tape on that and uh, get a whole bunch of stuff taped out mm -hmm. I think your kids would enjoy hearing them. Oh, yeah. They, some of these stories we better hide, though, you reckon? Uh, <laughs> they're mild to what people do today. Yeah, oh. Lord have mercy. They say everything and do everything on television. I put um. some stuff on TV. It's, it embarrasses me and me sitting there by myself. Oh. And, you, and you wouldn't dare do it in a nightclub. And they're doing it on TV for a okay. general audience. Just like this old joke I was telling you about, I probably told it to you, you've not heard it, but this old boy moved into this community and for, been there for two years and nobody never come to see him. One day a knock come at the door and he walked to the door and there stood this guy and he said, hey buddy, he said, we're going to have a party down at the house tonight, would you like to come down? He said, well, of course I'd like to come down. He says, uh, what time are you going to? He said, well, it's 8 or 9 o'clock in time. You want to? The old boy said, well, he said, I'll be down. And the old boy started getting his, he said, oh, turn around and said, oh, and I'm, now listen. He said, there might be a little drinking going on, a little drinking going on. Old boy says, well, says, I have been known to have a swallow every now and then, so that's all right with me. And old boy started to get in his car, and he says, uh, about one or two o'clock, there might be a little fighting going on. Might be a little fighting going on. He said, well, he says, I have been known to take my heart and so forth and says if I can't whoop somebody I can always run. I said okay. He started to turn around he says now about daylight there might be some heavy sex. The old boy says well that sounds all right to me he says I have to write down my aisle and he says what shall I wear? The old boy says, hey, don't worry, worry anything you want to. There ain't going to be nobody better than me and you. <laughs> I like that. Fred, we'll turn this tape off. Where'd you get it on? This old woman bought this parrot. She wanted a talking parrot, see. 
she bought it. He said, now you can take this parrot in where you want to. And said, it'll be good company to you. And so she took it to church. And there it was sitting on her shoulder. About the middle days of the preacher. The old parrot says, hot in here. She said, I can't put up with this. Took it back to the pet shop and says, can't put up with this. Says, interrupted the preacher and all that stuff. And pet owner says well I'll tell you what so bring it back down here and we'll see what we do so she brought it back and he said now let me tell you what to do he says now if it if it starts it again just reach up and shake it just shake it good see and says that, that, that'll put a stop to that next Sunday showing up sitting on her shoulder middle way of the service Old Pat, hot in here. She took it back to the pet owner. Told him, he says, well, I'll tell you what to do. He says, now the next time he does it, just reach up and get him by the neck and swing him around a while. <laughs> well, she said, well, we'll see if that'll work. Short enough, she took it back to church and the old parrot about middle ways of service says, hot in here. She reached up and got it by the neck, swung it around a few times and put it back on her shoulder. And he says, windy too, ain't it? <laughs> well, these problem. You, you probably used to do the one about the uh, boat that got sunk during the war. Huh. Well, this fellow was on, he was trying to entertain the troops, you know, and doing magic trips, tricks, and he pulled his handkerchief out of his pocket, stuck it in, pulled it out, and, you know, a dove comes out, and he does all kinds of tricks like this, and pretty quick a torpedo hit the boat. Well, it, I have to back up a bit. Every time he'd do a magic trick, there's this woman, a great big old fat woman, standing there watching, huh, I can do that with my eyes closed. And he'd do another, huh, I can do that with my eyes closed, and he did about five or six tricks pretty quick torpedo hit the boat and the boat sunk. So he's out there, you know, floating around, got grabbed a hold of something, pretty quick this woman comes up, she says, no kidding, how'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> oh, I think a whole lot of them sometimes. Well, just so I've got it on tape one more time, tell me about the woman that went to church and the, the one in the church that's on your tape over there. They got her dress stuck. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> that old, old uh, Bernard, Joe Parts's boy, said I was out walking around one Sunday morning to run into Bernard and had two of the worst looking black eyes I believe I ever seen. I said, Bernard, how'd you get the black eyes? He said, I got them in church this morning. He said, about the middle of the service, the preacher said, let's all stand and sing, and said, when this big fat woman stood up, her, the poor soul's dress had got stuck you know where. He said, I thought I'd do the poor old soul a favor, and I just reached and got it and pulled it out. He said, Lord, she wheeled around and whammed me in my left eye, and I seen stars. I said, well, how'd you get the right one? He said, well, see, when she turned back around, I'd seen her right then, I'd made a mistake, and I tried to stuff it back. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, said, Lord. said, I'll never forget the first time I come down with the parts. Selling Rosebud Save. Joe said, you're welcome to spend the night. You'll have to sleep with Bernard. I said, what's wrong with Bernard? He, he said, well, see, Bernard snores. He snores. And, and, and I said, well, let me tell you, I don't mind that. I think handle that situation. So the next morning to come down, Joe said, well, how'd you make out? He said, well, I slept good. He said, see, when I first walked into the bedroom, I just walked in and kissed him. He sat there and stared at me all night long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> they don't have any comedians on TV now that are at all funny. I haven't seen a one on that I thought, you know, was a, a, a genuine comedian. Well, what to do, they, they, they have them on and then they have that canned laughter too. I can't oh, take yeah. that stuff. Yeah, but even the stories they tell are either vulgar or uh, they're, they're off color, but they, they don't have anybody that's a true, can tell a story. Yeah, that's true. They're not. I mean, there's an app to tell them. Well, I'll tell you, if, if it's necessary, when I work, I consider myself as, as well as anybody in the business. And I'll tell you why. Hell, I'm the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, last of the big shoes. Is that it? Last of the Big Shoes. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's going to be the title of Fred's book, The Last of the Big Shoes. Well, I, I showed you that thing in there that uh, that Faye uh, drawed out for me on, on the cover of no. my book. No I, didn't, no, I didn't see that. I'll have to look at that when we get up from here. See, I'm scared. There's, there's, a, there's a P8 right there. A what? A P8 right here. Right. Oh, so you want him? He's being yeah, let me, polite. Let me, let me take him to you. Can I take him home? You, you put him in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Shake him right in that oh. shit. Hey, uh -oh. Ruth, you and I better get out of here. We ain't going nowhere. We get well, out I tell of you here. what my suggestion is. 